I'm here with Amy Coker uh, from the University of Liverpool. Amy, what's your precise title? You told me before, but I know I'm going to make a white pig's ear of it, yeah. so I'll leave you to... Okay, it's quite so. grand. It's the JP Postgate University teacher in Greek and Latin. So and this means... Um, I teach Latin, like mainly Latin and Greek to undergraduates at University of Liverpool and a bit of first year literature as well. Great. Yes. And the Postgate here is... Uh, yeah, it's I'm funded by Trust, hence JP Postgate, who was a lecturer in the well early part of the 20th century and foundational in the early CA actually. So it's quite appropriate right, that we're right, here at the CA interesting. today. Yeah. And you were in a panel yesterday at the CA. Yeah, yeah. The um, linguistics. Panel. Yeah. And what was yeah. the title of your paper? Um, it was about rude words in Greek, and it was basically oh, about, about, <laughs> um, about bum words. <laughs> words are, there, are there many bum words in Greek? Uh, there are a surprising number <laughs> of bum words in Greek. Um, oh yes. And it was really about working out how, how we know that if a word is rude or not. So, you know, we can, I can say the word arse to you, yeah. and we know that's rude, or a bit yeah. rude. Or though buttocks isn't very rude, yeah. but it's still quite funny. Um, but if we have words in Greek, how do we know which ones are rude and which ones are not? So, you know, it's not just about uh, saying naughty words, it's about linguistics and context. So how do you tell? Um, well, partly it's looking at context, so if you've got something in comedy, it's probably going to be rude versus in, in the medical text, mm -hmm. where it's probably not going to be a bit more formal. Um, it's a bit more complicated than that, but it's, it's difficult, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, this comes off the back of research of a chap that died in 2004, David Bain, leaving quite a lot of work unfinished, and I've kind of been past this big pile of stuff, and okay. to kind of get on with it eventually. So and there are, very big, much at the beginning. are there big generic differences as well? I mean, you mentioned medicine comedy and, and, and medicine. Yeah. Um, I expect so. Yeah, I mean, this is very much the beginning of research. Right. Very tentatively going in there. Started with bomb words because they're less offensive than other words. <laughs> oh, so you'll be moving on to other parts uh, of the body. Yes, other body parts, other <laughs> bodily functions. <laughs> uh, but starting with, starting with bottom words. And sure. I, I presume, and just from my very sketchy knowledge of Aristophanes, um, you've got to be pretty good pretty good as a linguist to to get out of because there are so many compound words and he's also yeah. making up words. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them are using others to work out, yeah. obviously. Um, but yeah, but it's quite a lot of fun. So linguistics is fun, Greek is fun, that's what we're trying to get across. It's Fantastic. Well, Greek. especially if you're dealing with bum words. Exactly. So. I mean, Greek, Greek isn't all about you know, beardy philosophers yeah. talking about highfalutin philosophy. <laughs> beards are fun. Um, you know, it's, it's a real language and that's what people forget, I think, quite often. It's not about history. You know, people wrote letters to each other, mm -hmm. um, they were mean to each other in the marketplace, did their shopping, all that kind of thing. And that's stuff that we, well, we're increasingly finding more Greek that says things like that in the form of letters and ostraca, so bits of writing on scraps of stone and stuff. So, right, um, so you're not just looking at literary evidence here, no, there's a whole gamut. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's something I haven't really looked at much yet. Right. So it's a very big project, but more and more of that is coming in. So, so uh, this sounds to me like the field of uh, sociolinguistics? Uh, broadly speaking, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about vocabulary rather than complex syntax and things, so mm -hmm. it's kind of accessible, I suppose. Um, word vocabulary rather than you know, complex things, really. And did you have any particular examples that you gave in uh, the panel yesterday that you can share with us now? Yeah, um, uh, the vague conclusions were that there's a um, glutos is a buttock. Okay. Glutoi are the buttocks. Okay. Pair, yeah. Pair of buttocks. Pair of buttocks. Pair of buttocks. Okay. Glutoi. Glutoi buttocks. You need this kind That's of... That's quite exactly. <laughs> and just... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did that in the panel. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's sort of the more formal word, and yeah. it's a very rude word, ficus, ficus, which we get in a papyrus letter, which is apparent with a drawing next to it, um, oh, other really? things, which is kind of oh, great. So you get graffiti, so you get, yeah. So you, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You also have visual images, yeah, there. next to it, and, right. and of course you're couched in very formal language. Yeah, and talk about these things, and, you know, and publications talk about. Them. They won't say the word arse very often. They'll say you know, a fundament. Which is a big, big favourite <laughs> word of mine at the moment. So, what can you make of this word um, in this papyrus? I mean, what do you think it's doing there? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really well. The the papyrus is known as an obscene letter. <laughs> yes, I won't go into the details for your for your viewers of what what, what it says. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I think it's known as the indecent proposal letter as well. Oh, and I see. And there's a small apparently picture. And I haven't seen the picture of this, but it's a picture plus a little a, a caption on the picture. And the second word is and fetus. <laughs> <laughs> I think we see where that's going. Yes, <laughs> let's probably not go down too far. But, um, uh, yeah. but the, I guess with the papyrus, what we might be getting a sense here is of. 
Well, certainly not a literary form. I guess a papyri yeah. would be used, as you say, as a, as a letter, yeah, something much more yeah. informal. Uh, well, we're talking much more private. Yes, that's well, right. If we can talk about private, public, but no, this yeah. is not stuff for general dissemination, really. This is stuff people to each other, I see. not for public display. Um, and that was the. Do we know where the papyrus was found? Uh, I think it would be an Egyptian one. They've got yeah. a lot of papyri coming out of Egypt because yeah. they're preserved well. And it would be a Greek community uh, in Egypt. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's Greek spoken in Egypt, not not what you would perhaps normally expect as a new person to classics, but Greeks everywhere and being written down everywhere. And that's very exciting for linguists like me. Fantastic. Um, and, yeah. and do you see this? You mentioned it's part of a wider project. Do you, do you have any idea at the minute where the, where this might be going? Well, I mean, there is there's a sort of partially finished manuscript on Iskorologia, which is root words, mm -hmm. roughly in Greek. Um, eventually, I suppose it's to go through everything that I've got passed on from David Bain that hasn't been published, work out what needs to be done to it, sort it out, and eventually you know, the book will appear on root words. So are these uh, just what just one final point? Uh, uh, is this evidence available? Generally, and this is a kind of you're you're working with this archive, and you're in it's it's an interpretive archive, or is there new material there that people won't have seen before? Um, new scholarship. Probably. Yeah, what well, new scholarship, and also yeah. maybe even new uh, primary sources. Um, all the primary sources I think have probably been published okay. in various sort of probably more niche publications like mm -hmm. the archaeological journals. But not brought stuff. together. But not brought together, I see, which is yeah. what the sort of the novelty of this is. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, David was really into the whole rude words at the end of his career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think he had quite a good sense of humour. Who is it? <laughs> I think there's an art, one of the articles is called Apotropaic Farting. <laughs> Another one's called Six Greek Verbs of Sexual Congress, which again is is the best title for an article you can ever imagine. It's going to be the best title for a book. Your books are going to be yeah, flying off the well, shelf. Never, so never a long, it's a long way off. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the next big step for me. Well, fantastic! Thanks Thank for giving us a glimpse into this in, into this world. Yeah. I, I mean, I just really can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that says a lot about me. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks very much, Amy. That's no wonderful. Problem. Cheers.